Hey everybody and welcome to another video from Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to introduce you to having a second activity so that we can launch our second activity from our first activity. You might want to do this if you want to display another screen and in our example that we're going to use today on our first screen I'm going to have you input some data and then we're going to pass that data to a second activity to display that data. That might not sound that interesting but it's going to be the foundation for future Android development. So let's get started. In our last video, if you remember, that we created a data class for a person object. A person object has a first name, last name, an age, and a birthday. And what I also did is I also made it serializable. We want to make it serializable because we want to be able to make this data be passed between our first activity and our second activity. So make sure you have that keyword in your data class. And if you haven't watched our first video, that's okay. Just copy down the code that we have on the screen, and we're going to go back to our main activity to start setting up everything that we need. So here's our previous code. We're actually just going to get rid of that. And then we're going to go over to our layout to start creating our inputs for our person object. So I'm going to get rid of our hello world text view there. And then I'm going to add in a couple of widgets here, starting with some plain text widgets. So these are going to allow us to input different, uh, a first name, a last name, an age, and then I'm going to have a button for that. Uh, I'm going to ignore the, the date class for right now. I'm just going to populate these for here. And of course, I need to put all these inside of a layout. So let's go to our layouts. And this kind of represents a vertical layout for me. So I'm going to use a linear layout vertical. I'm going to drag this in here, select all of my widgets, and drop those under there. Of course, those didn't come in exactly the way I wanted to. So if we click on button, drag that down below, and this is going to be good for our purposes here. What I'm going to do is go over here and we're going to change these edit texts to first name edit text. Copy that, go down here. This is going to be called last name edit text. And then finally for the last one, this is going to be an edit text that's just for the age, so age edit text. And then we're going to change the default values in here. I'm going to get rid of all of those. But I'm also going to put in some hints. And we're going to hard code these hints for today. But we're going to have first name here. Second name here. And then finally, age. The other thing I'm going to do is, because these are plain text, uh, the age, I just want a numeric value being placed in there. So when the age edit text is selected, we can go down to our input type here. And I'm going to uncheck text person name, which actually matches perfectly for what we had in those other two. That's just the default one. And I'm going to select number. You can do number signed if you need a negative value in there. Obviously, ages are not that way. You can have a decimal etc. So I'm just going to uh, select this one, number. And if we're putting in a birthday, we would also allow a birthday input, but we're not going to do that just to keep it simple. And then finally, for our name here, we're going to just call this display button. And this button is going to display the entries that we make in this text field. Again, a very simple uh, example, but should illustrate nicely what we can do in Android. Okay, so that's our one layout that we're going to have. Now we need a second activity that appears when we hit that display button. So it's going to open up an entirely different layout, and then it's going to display our first name, last name, and um, actually let me change that to last name. I'm not sure why I put second name. And then it's going to put those into text views for us that are uneditable. And that'll be our application. So let's go ahead and start that second activity. I'm going to right click on our package to put it in the same package, go down to activity, and we can create all sorts of different activities, but this one is just going to be a basic activity that we're going to create. And we're gonna give it a name. So instead of main two activity, we're going to call this person display activity. All right, we're going to just uh, make sure all these different options look similar to yours. Obviously, your package name will look a little bit different, but the source language that I'm going to use is, of course, Kotlin. Hit finish on that. All right, so now what Android Studio has done is create a layout for me for that person display activity. It's also created the activity class itself with a little bit of uh, 
boilerplate code. It also has a float and action button included in here, uh, which we won't need. But then the other thing that it's done, which we haven't talked about yet, is it's actually added the activity to the list of activities within our Android manifest file. So when we add a second activity, we also have to let the Android manifest file or the application slash operating system know what different types of activities we have. And there's a lot of different reasons why we need to let the operating system know what kind of activity this is. Mainly what we're going to do is in our main activity, we're gonna tell the operating system that this activity, main activity here, is going to be our launcher activity. So when we add it through Android Studio, it does that automatically for us, and that's great. But I just wanted to show you that it adds those three things. Again, the Android manifest entry, the person display activity, or our second activities class, and then finally the content person display. So in this one, we're going to have a couple text views on here that's going to display our first name, last name, and then our age. All right, so I'm gonna leave those texts just small here so we can go through this quickly. I'm going to add a linear vertical layout here. I'm gonna drag that in here and simply highlight these and drag them in. Okay, so for our first one, we're just gonna name this first name. Oops, and I don't wanna make capital letters. We're gonna use underscores instead of camel case. I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste it in the ID, and of course change first name to last. And then finally, this is going to be our uh, age text view. Okay, we can leave the default here because as soon as this gets loaded, we're going to populate this programmatically so you'll never see it. It's probably a good idea to put some placeholder there, but in the interest of time, we're just gonna go ahead and capture our data from our button press. So we're gonna get that button press immediately by getting the reference to our button. Okay, so that's how we get our reference to that button, if you remember, and then we're going to get a reference to our different fields for our first name, last name, and age. Make sure you select the edit text for our ID, and then I'm gonna copy and paste these and change the names here for last. Make sure it's the edit text, and then for this one, it's just going to be age edit text. So now that we have references to our elements on our first activity, we're going to set a click listener on our button. So if we do button, set on click listener, and then when the button is pressed, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a person object. So I'm gonna call this value person of type person, and I'm gonna set that equal to its constructor and we're simply just going to fill in the values here. Now, of course, you wanna check to make sure that these are not null when these come in because certainly that's a possibility that somebody doesn't enter in the text and they hit the button. You wanna validate that. But again, interest of time, we're gonna keep this short. Okay, and I just have to remember to put this to a string. Okay, and then if you remember, our age is being input as a number. Now we're pretty sure that's going to be a number unless somebody copies and pastes in that, which in, we can disable that, of course. But uh, we want to make sure that that's a, that's a number that's coming in here. So we're being required to enter in an integer. So we have to make this an int. Okay, so one way to do that is to take the string out of the text and then force it into an integer. All right, and then the birthday it's asking for, we're just going to ignore that, but again, it's just the date. We're gonna pass in just the default constructor. It's gonna return what right now is, but that should give us our person object. Now, here's the important thing that we wanna to cover to in today's video is we have to create a second activity and then launch that activity to display on the screen. The way that we do that is with an intent. So I'm gonna create an intent with the value keyword here. I'm just gonna call that intent with a lowercase, and that is going to be of type intent. All right, and then we're going to just create a intent constructor. Just make sure you select the right class. And then in that constructor, what the intent needs to know about, the intent is going to be the item that launches our activity. It needs to know from which activity or context it's being launched from. So we're just going to simply pass it this instantiation of the class. And then the next thing that it's going to ask is which class or which activity do you want me to launch? And so we're gonna to want to launch that person display activity. So if I type in person display activity, 
this is a way of doing it. However, this is not enough for the intent to know which what this is because this is nothing in code. What we need to do is because the intent functionality is actually Java based, we have to pass it a Java class. Now, because these are Kotlin classes, we need to tell that, that we're gonna use the Java version of the Kotlin class. And the way that we do this is we put in two colons here, and then we're going to do class.java, and the autocomplete helps me out here, so I'm just gonna hit enter there. And so again, this is going to use the Java version of our Kotlin kind of under the hood to interact with the Java backend that intent, this guy here, is actually being implemented in. Because if you remember, Android is a Java-based language. A lot of it is written in Java. And so when you're interacting with its API, such as intent here, which is technically part of the app compact activity, which again is, its, is a Java class in itself, we have to kind of circumvent that and use this kind of bridge between the Java and the Kotlin worlds. Okay, so again, this is going to be which activity, the package context, or what activity is going to be launched from, and then which class that we want the intent to launch for us. So we're intending to launch our activity. Now, the next thing you can do with our intent is you can put extra data in that intent that gets passed to our activity. Normally, I don't use a whole lot of intent extras to package information in. Usually, I'll pass in one or two pieces of information and then have that second activity go and fetch that from a, a data repository of something. We'll cover that in future videos, but for today, what we're going to do is in our intent, we're going to put extras, and you can see all the overloaded methods that we have for put extra. The one that we're interested in is because we want to pass in an entire Kotlin class. If we scroll down here, you can see that we can pass in strings or floats or integers. I want to pass in a serializable. So it's probably this one here. Yep, if I expand this out, you can see it. But I want to make sure that I'm able to pass in a serializable object. Obviously this is overloaded, so I can just pass in the object. I don't need to necessarily select that one. But what the extra is, let me remove that. What the extra is, is a key value, kind of a dictionary or hash map of key value pairs. And so you give it a key and we're gonna say, we're just gonna call this person. Now normally you'd wanna parameterize this and put it into a, a constant, but we're just going to pass this in. So here's our key person and then here's our object with all that data that we have from our from our edit texts here all right so once we create that intent we want to start the activity with that intent so we can start activity with intent and then simply pass in the intent to that let's save that and i'm going to launch my emulator and just see what this does now obviously we're not pulling this information out of it we're just going to make sure that just works the way that it should so we have our application launched here. Now we have to type in some stuff here because otherwise our application will crash based on how we're pulling those values out. So simply just type in here. And now you can see that we just have our, our simple input here. So I'm gonna hit display. And of course it displays our second activity. Now the way that we get back to our first activity is simply hit that back button on Android. And that works automatically. We didn't have to add any code for that. All right, perfect. So this is working as expected. Yeah, if you do experience a crash on that display, make sure that we have these fields filled out. Otherwise, it'll try to pull out the string and then try to convert it into an in or do whatever it needs to do. And those values will be null and thus it'll crash. Okay, so again, we're passing that data into our intent via this line. We can have other in intent extras here, such as uh, let's say put extra, and then I can select any one of those. Now yeah, let me get rid of that auto correct or auto complete for us um, some key and then we can pass in literally anything that we want as long as it is in that list all right perfect so the next thing we want to do is go into our person display activity because we're going to want to pull that information out of the intent that's being passed into us that essentially launched and created this activity that we're in so this is in our second activity and i'm going to create a new person of type person Okay, and I'm going to actually set this equal to the extras that were passed into me. And so the way that we get the extras out of the intent that created this activity, I'm going to type in intent dot get serializable extra. Now we have to be explicit with our gets and what those gets return. 
we can't just have an overloaded method because then you have type checking and it gets really messy. So we have to make sure that the object that we're getting out of our get is indeed the object that's being returned. So in this case, it's going to be a serializable object, which person is, so that's fine. And we just pass it the key, which the key was person. Okay, and then simply we just do as a person object. Obviously you wanna make sure that this item exists. It's not null, maybe the activity, the first activity didn't pass it into us properly. So that's always a, a case, so check that as well. I'm just gonna do some value. This is going to be, I believe it was an integer, and we're gonna do the same thing to pull out that other value. So get int extra, and that one was just called some key. I believe, and if we go back to our main activity, you can see that this person and that's some key. So one reason why you want to actually extract this into a, a variable or a constant that you can access from anywhere, and that way I'm not having to remember what the string is here. And if this one comes up as null, we're gonna have to put in a default value here. So um, I think the value that I passed in was 10, so let's just put 999 as our default value. You can see the Android Studio puts up a little reminder of what that parameter name is. And that's great. So we can even do a check to see like if it's equal to that 9999, something like that, then then we know that this was this was null. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is get a reference to our first name text view, and that's going to be of type text view. Get our last name, text view, change this to last name. Again, make sure it's the text view item that we're trying to get. And then finally, this one was going to be our age, text view. Perfect. And then now that we have this person object that was passed to us from the first activity, we can now populate our text views using that person object. age is an int, so we just have to make sure that goes to a string, and that should complete our display of our second activity via what was passed in to us from our first activity. Again, through that intent that was used to create that second activity through its extras. We call that the intense extras, and so that's how we pull out that intent extra, and you can go back and see that how we put those intent, we create the intent, we tell it that we're going to launch some activity, this activity, from this context. And so then we pass in the activity that we want to create. We give that activity some values to populate itself or, or use to gather data elsewhere and populate it, which we'll see in future videos. And then finally, we start that activity. There is a way to actually get a callback when the second activity is done. And the way that we do that is instead of start activity, we do start activity for result. And then we create another function as a callback so that when that second activity returns, it'll give us a confirmation or uh, basically a response, whatever happened in that activity, whether it was an affirmative or a negative. And that's one way of getting information back from the second activity. Again, we'll cover that in a future video for right now. Let's go ahead and run this and see if everything works. All right, so here is our application here. Of course, it says data classes because that was the previous application that we used from our last video. But we're going to type in our name using the tab key works. And let's say that we're four years old today. And I'm going to hit display. Again, that's going to create an, an intent. It's going to wrap up some extras in that intent, launch our second activity. Our second activity is going to unwrap those extras and then populate our text view uh, in a very ugly manner, but it works. So I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to see future videos like this on Kotlin development, Android development, iOS development, 3D game development, and more, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Give it a like if you want to see more Kotlin content. Share it amongst your friends if you think it'd be useful, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.